Hi, it is Friday, April 9th, 2021. Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about this big, light heavyweight title fight coming up. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's talk about Joe Smith versus Maxim Vlasov, right? Let me just throw out some caveats here. We're going to throw out some terms here. If you're a baseball fan, you understand the term a fastball pitcher, right? In other words, you know the guy on the mound throws a great fastball. You know he's throwing it. He knows he's throwing it. He's not there trying to fool you with pitch selection that much. He's just trying to throw it by you. The idea is that you just don't have what it takes. You just don't have the reflexes to catch up with his fastball. Right? This is baseball, but it's also part of boxing. Certain boxers enter the ring and you know exactly what they're going to try to do. They're not even hiding the punches, right? You understand that they have holes in their game. In other words, they have a certain style that works for them. They're not trying to hide it. You know it's coming. They know it's coming, right? If you get them off that style, you could have success, but doing so is very difficult because that style has gotten them, if not the title, then contender status. That's Joe Smith. Understand, Joe Smith is a mid-range hooker. Understand, Joe Smith is extremely predictable. He'll throw a left-hand hook at mid-range, then he'll throw a right-hand hook at mid-range, right? You rarely see him double up on the same hand, right? Left hand, right hand, hooks. Occasionally, I've seen him take a step back to throw a hook a little bit closer, right? But let me just say this. His hooks are almost always to the head. Occasionally, he'll drop a hook low, but you understand again, it's left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, hooks, power shots, volume. Joe Smith does not want a boxing match to break out in a fight. He wants to come. He wants to overwhelm you. He hits hard. He has a lot of stamina. He can throw a lot of punches. He wants you playing defense to his offense. He wants to dictate distance. He's front foot. He's not back foot. He's throwing hooks. He's not throwing straight punches. You're not going to see a lot of deviation. He's not going to suddenly come out and decide he's going to rely on straight right hands or jab you to death. This is not that guy. This is the guy who comes out and he's trying to throw hooks. He's trying to overpower you. He's trying to back you up. He's trying to get you playing defense. Now, let me just say, I need for people to just stop here for a moment and just think about what this means. Joe Smith is made for a slick counterpuncher who can turn him. In other words, Joe Smith throws a right hook, right? He's open after he throws the hook. If you could dodge the hook, if your defense is such that you can hide your head behind your shoulder and have the hook just bounce off a bicep, 
Or if you're slick and as he throws the hook, you're able to move get either outside of it or too deep inside of it for him to hurt you. Then for a moment, this is what counterpunching is all about. For a moment, he's going to be open on that side. In other words, this is not a guy throwing hooks and hiding, right? He's not throwing a hook while hiding. No, this is a guy who's throwing the hook and as he leans this way, he's cocking the left hand to throw the next hook. Right? He's coming at you square, not side angle, because he wants to be able to get leverage to throw hooks with both hands. So when he throws a hook, if you have timing, if you have rhythm, if you're not overwhelmed and you're prepared for this, you have an opening on every hook Joe Smith throws, right? So you know, he throws a left hand, his next punch is gonna be a right hand. So if you know what you're doing, you get out of the way of the right hand and since he's defenseless on his left side right after he throws the hook, in other words, his hand's extended, then you can hit him on that side. It's easier said than done, right? Understand the major leagues in baseball are flooded with fastball pitchers, Right? The manager can tell you, hey, he's going to throw fastballs at 98 miles an hour. Right? The first few times you see the guy, you might not be able to get his release point, the point at which the ball leaves his hand. His windup might be foreign to you. It might have a hitch. He might be like Clayton Kershaw. By the time you figure out his delivery, you're hearing the ball in the catcher's mitt. That's how it is with Joe Smith. Joe Smith comes out, opponents cannot believe how aggressive he is. Opponents cannot believe how hard he hits. Opponents cannot believe how much stamina he has. Now this fight is interesting. Let's talk about the play. The guy he's fighting is 34 years old. So right there, that's a red flag because Joe Smith, who's a little bit younger, not much, but a little bit younger, has great stamina. So you hear 34 and you're thinking, wow, how's this guy going to last against a heavy, high volume puncher who has a lot of stamina, right? But this guy, Maxim Vlasov, a plus 245 underdog, has only lost to Ike Chalemba, excellent fighter, and he avenged that loss. He lost to Gilberto Ramirez. Understand, I personally have believed for years that Gilberto Ramirez is one of boxing's most underrated fighters. Right? When he was fighting at lighter weights, I thought he'd be able to beat Canelo. Excellent jab. Excellent jab. Right? I thought Canelo would have a hard time with his jab, with his reach. And, of course, the last person Vlasov lost to was Christoph Glowacki, the guy who Lawrence O'Coley, the new author, the cruiserweight champion, just beat. Right, so here we have a fight that to me is interesting because Vlasov is slick, because Vlasov can counter, because... Rhythm-wise, and this matters, Vlasov is like a jazz drummer. He can change rhythm, right? He must look at Joe Smith and think this guy's robotic. Understand the first rule of beating Joe Smith is being able to break his rhythm. In other words, Joe Smith comes in and he throws a right hand. You've got to be able to use upper body movement, defense, timing, to dodge the right hand and to be in position to counter him. 
I believe Vlasov does that well. The bet I like here, and we're always trying to make better than even money profits, right? The bet I like here is Vlasov at plus 245, hedged with Joe Smith by KO. Because here's what I believe is going to happen. Either Vlasov can handle Joe Smith's fastball, or he can't. It's just that simple. Right? If Joe Smith comes out and he's landing a lot of hooks and he has this 34 year old in the crosshairs, deer, stuck in headlights, the guy can't act, the guy freezes like Alvarez did. When he fought Joe Smith, the guy's just standing there, the guy's doing a lot of defense because he's afraid to open up, doesn't trust his defense, is eating a lot of punches then he's going to get eaten up and stopped, in my opinion. Let's just be blunt. But if Vlasov comes in and is able to exploit Joe Smith's rhythm, is able to exploit the fact that he knows the left hand is coming after the right hand. He knows it's a hook. He knows he can counter the punches because he knows Joe Smith is not defensively blessed. He also knows he can split the uprights. You're fighting a hooker. You can come right down Main Street between punches. He also knows that if he moves laterally, lateral movement's big here. If he moves laterally and forces Joe Smith to lift his feet, he's going to disrupt Joe's rhythm. If Joe's not hurting you, in my opinion, he's losing rounds on the scorecards. Right now, let's be clear. I expect the favorite to win. I think Joe Smith wins by KO simply because Vlasov is 34 years old, simply because Joe, I believe, is 31 or so, has been in against elite fighters, right? Bernard Hopkins, Bivol, right? He's been in against elite fighters. He's relentless. He's going to continually not, you know, cut off the ring. He has less to think about in the ring than his opponent, right? Vlasov has to be thinking angles, has to be thinking movement, has to be thinking defense, right? Joe Smith is just in there throwing hard hooks, hoping Vlasov, who isn't a big puncher, decides to trade with him. So Vlasov, to be blunt, is the better technician than Joe Smith. But understand, a fastball is what it is. A style that is highly effective, that wilts opponents who can't trade with Joe Smith, who can't handle his volume, who can't get into their game, who aren't prepared to move, bob and weave, move, come in, risk it, time his right hand, time his left hand, Hit him. Turn him. Right? Opponents wilt. They can't do all that. So it's going to be uphill for Vlasov. But here's what I think I know. If Vlasov gets out of the early rounds, if he's not completely overwhelmed in the first four rounds by Joe Smith, if he's not weakened in the first four rounds by Joe Smith, Right? Think Kubert Pulev against Anthony Joshua for a fighter blown out in the first four rounds. Who then lingers? Right? If Vlasov is close to 100%, by the end of the fourth round, he'll have a strategy. He needs a strategy to survive. He'll have a strategy against Joe Smith. And these mid-range hooker robotic types can then get figured out. Just like a fastball pitcher gets figured out. 
the third time through the lineup by hitters. Right by then, that overwhelming fastball, they start to notice the guy's release point. They know the fastball is coming. Right? In fairness to big leaguers, most starting pitchers typically have some off pitch, right? Nolan Ryan, fastball, great curveball. Right? But you and I know they're relief pitchers. Mariano Rivera, who's in the Hall of Fame now, who lived off a split finger fastball. That's Joe Smith. Right? I need for people to understand the risk involved, though. We're saying take Vlasov. I'm saying take Vlasov plus 225, right? We want to make a profit gambling. I'm not interested in incurring risks if I'm not making a profit. So Vlasov plus 245, to me, that's a bargain. Hedged with Joe Smith by stoppage. But understand, if the fight goes the distance... And the favorite, Joe Smith wins. And Joe Smith's going off at something like a minus 300. You lose it all. Right? That's the risk I'm willing to take here. Um, just keys to people uh, watching the fight. Just see where the spacing is early in the fight. Right? Is Vlasov able to turn Joe Smith in the middle of the ring? How hard is it for Joe Smith to get Vlasov up against the ropes? Is Vlasov able to get inside of Joe Smith's hooks and to actually hit Smith in the body? Right? Also, look for counters. Is Joe Smith getting hit on his left side after he throws left hands while his left hand's extended? If you see stuff like that, you'll know Vlasov has him timed. Right? Also, in the early rounds, and understand, Smith is a fast starter. Right? In the early rounds, see if you're giving Vlasov rounds. Understand, if we get to the end of the fourth round, and it's a 2-2 fight, and Vlasov is actually landing counters with regularity, Right? Look at whether Joe Smith is turning. Because Joe Smith likes to get you up on the ropes, as you can imagine. He knocked Bernard Hopkins out of the ring after having Hopkins up against the ropes. Joe Smith likes to get you on the ropes. He likes to keep his head low. There's a method to the madness. He keeps his, le his head low, so his head is about the same plane as his hooks. And then he's throwing hook after hook. Right? Is Joe Smith able to square up against Vlasov? Or is Vlasov keeping him turning? Is Joe Smith able to land three punches in a row? Those are the questions you need to ask early in this fight. I'll take the risk because I do believe. Vlasov is a world-class opponent. I do believe all the guys he lost to are above-average fighters. I do believe that Joe Smith, who has lost some fights, he lost to Bivol, for example, can be figured out. Right? The question here is, is Vlasov a fastball hitter? We'll find out on fight night. I like the underdog here, plus 245, hedged with the favorite, Joe Smith, by KO. Understand, Smith's a KO puncher. He'll be going for the KO. Understand, this is a 12-round fight. Vlasov is 34. You need to ask yourself, is Vlasov prepared to deal with 12 rounds of hell? I think he has the mental toughness. I'll take the chance, but understand, it's a hedged play for me. If Joe Smith knocks him out in the ninth round, okay, fine. You know, understand, Joe Smith stopped Alvarez. 
right? That's a recent fight for him. Stopped Alvarez. That fight didn't make it 10 rounds, right? If Joe Smith is getting outfought, then KOs him. Okay, fine. I'll live for another day. The hedge will have held. I'm only in trouble if this fight goes the distance. As the person outside apparently knows, and if Joe Smith wins by decision. I like the underdog, plus 245. Vlasov hedged with Joe Smith by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me point out too, Vlasov drops Chalemba in the rematch. I've put highlights of both fighters in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Take a look at it. Thanks for stopping by.